All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll show a very elegant yet classical result in analysis. Namely, we'll show that if A is less than one in absolute value, then the limit of A to the N is always zero. So the absolute value of A is less than one. For instance, after this video, you'll be able to say with confidence, ah, I know that one half to the N converges to zero. And the proof is absolutely clever and beautiful, you'll see. So in fact, let's start with it. First of all, well, if A is zero, then zero to the N is always zero and the result has been proven. So assume that the interesting case that A is non-zero. And the first step is to do some scratch work. So what would we like to compare? We would like to compare a, a to the n with zero. So in other words, what we want to show is that this becomes very small. So we would like to study the difference between our sequence and our limit, which you can just write as absolute value of a to the n. Now here's the thing, a is a small number, so it turns out you can write this in a very useful form. No note, since the absolute value of a is less than one, we can write, namely we can write absolute value of a in the form one over one plus b for some b positive. You can explicitly solve for b if you want, but let me just give you an example. Suppose absolute value of a is uh, two-thirds. Well, then you can write this as one over three-halves, and that becomes one over one plus one-half. So in that case, b is one-half. And the, the point is, for every number less than 1, you can always do that. And uh, let's see, uh, yeah. Now, why is that useful? Because notice then, a to the n, so the stuff we want to show is small, just becomes 1 over 1 plus b to the n. So it looks like we would have to expand this thing 1 plus b to the n. And for this, we have to use a result that you may or may not know called the binomial theorem. And let me motivate this. So then this is a bit of an aside. Suppose you want to expand out a plus b squared. Well, you start with a squared and then 2ab and then b squared. And notice the powers of a are decreasing while the powers of b are increasing. And it turns out the same thing is true for a plus b cubed. You start with a cubed and then 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. Again, the powers of A are decreasing, while the powers of A of B are increasing. And it turns out we can do the same thing for A plus B to the N. So it turns out A plus B to the N, it's A to the N plus N, A to the N minus 1, B, plus, it's called N choose 2, so N times N minus 1 over 2, A to the n minus 2 b squared, etc., etc., up to b to the n. And we only need the first three terms for today and next time, but if you want, uh, you can just write this more generally as the sum from 0 to n of n choose k. Again, the powers of a are decreasing, so a to the n minus k times bk. Not Burger King, but uh, B to the power of K. Now, why is this useful? Because remember, we had our thing, 1 plus B to the N. 
Well, if you expand this out with the binomial theorem, this becomes 1 to the n plus n 1 to the n minus 1 b plus some positive junk plus the other terms. And for today, we don't really care about the other terms. And so this becomes even greater than or equal, it's fine. This becomes greater or equal to uh, 1 plus nb, and in particular, that's strictly bigger than nb. You know, I really envy you for watching this video. Okay, and that's very good. Why? Because a to the n is 1 over that. So from this, we actually get uh, in a less than or equal thing. So then, again, the term we want to show it's small, a to the n, is again 1 over 1 plus b to the n. And that becomes strictly less than 1 over nb. And what we want, we want this to be less than epsilon eventually. And in particular, what we need, uh, we need to choose. So we get, I think, oh, um, 1 over n is less than epsilon b. And then what we get is n is greater than 1 over epsilon b. And this suggests to choose this capital N, just to be 1 over epsilon b. All right, and now let's execute this. So step two, again, let epsilon be given, and then write, again, absolute value of A as 1 over 1 plus B, and let capital N to be 1 over epsilon B, then, Then if n is bigger than capital N, then the difference again between our sequence and zero becomes a to the n, which becomes one over one plus b to the n, which becomes strictly less than one over nb, because again, one plus b to the n is strictly greater than nb, but then that just becomes 1 over b times 1 over n. And again, because n is bigger than our threshold, and our threshold is 1 over epsilon b, this becomes less than 1 over b times epsilon b. This cancels out, and we get epsilon, and therefore we are done limit n goes to infinity of a to the n equals zero. How nice is that? All right, thank you very much.